receivers in the NFL, and there are many of them. And we actually are so far ahead of time today that we can do a trivia question. There are people out there who love the trivia question. We used to do it all the time to determine the first pick in the draft, and then all of a sudden we just stopped. Well, today we start again. Oh boy. The streak may not be longer than one, but Miles, <laughs> get ready. Ozzie Newsom is the Browns' all-time leading receiver with 7,980 yards. Who is the Browns' leading receiver in yardage this century? So I, I resisted the temptation to look at the answer because I actually looked at the rundown last night, unlike you probably. Uh, so I think it's so let's Braylon just be clear. Edwards. You've had time to think about it. Uh, okay. I have. Okay. Yeah. It's Braylon nice Edwards try. or nice Josh try. Cribs. Hmm, I think. Think. Oh, you're not. Which so? Who are you picking? Edwards or Cribs? Uh, let's go fan? Edwards based on what you had all night was. to think about it. Yeah, <laughs> I I thought you were trying to sell me on the idea that you didn't look it up or you didn't at least think. No, about I didn't. It. You've had a I, chance no, I did to think, think about, about it. it. I did think about it. I thought about it a lot. It is. Braylon I went Edwards. to bed thinking about it, it and I I woke up thinking about it. <laughs> it is Braylon Edwards. The third overall pick in the 2005 draft, is that what it was, 2005? Back when you were 14? Good Lord. Actually, you were 13 when the 2005 draft happened. Yes, Braylon Edwards, uh, you are correct, and you get the first pick. All right. Well, give me Jalen Waddle. He started off the segment with the sound, and I, I love this guy, man. I, I think he really is one of the really good young emerging wide receivers in this league. I mean, 75 catches for over 1,300 yards last year and eight touchdowns. I mean, it's funny, Mike, the difference in the offensive scheme from one year to the next, when you get Mike McDaniel, he leads the league at 18.1 yards per reception. That's huge and almost doubled what his yards per reception was as a rookie. So I think the sky is the limit for him. Hopefully Tua Tungavailoa can stay healthy. If not, Mike White's going to come in there and he might sling that pill around to Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle too. I'll go T. Higgins because I don't think T. Higgins is really a number two. I think he's just a co-number yep. one, although Jamar Chase is still better. Higgins is the kind of guy who could leave as the number two in Cincinnati, become the number one somewhere else, and get it done. Unlike guys we've seen in the past, all the way back to Alvin Harper, when he left the Cowboys, he wasn't suited to be a number one. You got to have that ability to command double coverage. You got to be the guy. I think T. Higgins could go be the guy somewhere else. So he's my first pick, co-number one, not even a number two in Cincinnati. I mean, I, I think Jamar Chase is so talented that you have to put him as a number one, but I I think you're right that T Higgins could go be a number one somewhere else. I mean, he was the number one for Cincinnati the year before Jamar Chase got there and Joe Burrow got hurt. Probably otherwise he he would have had a thousand yards in that season. I mean, he's had a thousand yards in the last couple of years, so he was on my list too as somebody who's one of the best um, number twos in the league. But you didn't take my second pick. That's Devontae Smith. Because that's another guy that would be a number one in a lot of places, but he's not just because A.J. Brown is there. And I think you look at what he did last year, even though he didn't quite catch that fourth down pass, you know, in the uh, NFC Championship game, even though it actually counted. I mean, I, I think that this is a really special receiver. And you see his ability time and time again. Even though he's a slight guy, he's not afraid to do whatever he has to do to make catches, right? And he can make the contested plays. He can make the wide open plays, explosive plays. So I love what Devontae Smith does in that offense and his chemistry with Jalen Hurts is clearly off the charts. Okay. I'm struggling with the next one just because I don't know who the number two receiver is in Dallas. Who is the number two receiver in Dallas? Is it CeeDee Lamb or is it Brandon Cooks? They traded for Cooks, who has his second contract. He's making considerably more. He got a $16 million signing bonus on the way through the door with the Cowboys. CeeDee Lamb is still waiting for his second contract. Who's the number one? Who is the well, number one? What about one? Michael Gallup? Whoever. Well, well, right. But between, I think it's, e it's either going to be Cooks I mean or Lamb. CD, CD's the so number one. I'll go, CD's the number one. I'll go Cooks. Take Brandon I'll go Cooks, Cooks as your two. Then. Yeah. I'll go Cooks as the best number two because, I mean, he's just kind of overlooked and forgotten. The Cowboys added him to that mix, 
and uh, he still can run really fast, and he still has an impact everywhere he's been, even on a bad team like the Texans. So I'll go Brandon Cooks. Even though he hasn't played for the Cowboys yet, I think it'll be a great compliment to Lamb. Now, that's kind of what left Brandon Cooks off my list is that he hasn't necessarily played for the Cowboys yet. So, but, I mean, I, I, I spend time around Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks is a really good receiver. He understands route running well. He understands speed well. And kind of everywhere he's been, despite the fact that he's been in a bunch of places, he's made an impact. But I think that's kind of what makes him the number two, right? Because teams feel like they can move on from him and they'll still be okay. Whereas, you know, you're not really moving on from your number one all the time. And so Brandon Cooks is still that kind of good receiver. Um, I'm, I'm going to go to San Francisco for my next pick. And it's Brandon Ayuk because everybody talks about Debo Samuel. And we did earlier on in the show. And you've also got Christian McCaffrey now there. And, and you've got George Kittle. But Brandon Ayuk is somebody who has made really, really big, really, really tough catches for that team over the course of his career. And he's just one of those dudes that I think maybe gets a little bit overlooked. Last year, at 78 catches, just over 1,000 yards, eight touchdowns. And the way that San Francisco has constructed its roster with you know low QB cap hits, this is a guy that they can pay because he's in a contract year. I, I think that they are going to want to keep Brandon Ayuk around and see what he can do alongside this kind of core of offensive pieces that they've got. So that's one of those guys where I think, you know, you look at San Francisco and why they've been so successful over the last couple of years. He's definitely a big piece. The Packers wanted Justin Jefferson in 2020 first. He was gone. They wanted Ayuk. They got leapfrogged by the 49ers. And that's when the Jordan Love plan went into action how different the world would be if the Packers would have gotten Ayuk or especially Jefferson right now. Okay. Uh, I feel bad about this one because this one should have been sooner, I think. Tyler Lockett of the Seahawks. Yeah. Uh, I, and again, it's another guy where you don't – I don't think of him as a number two. He doesn't really feel like a number two. Mm-hmm. But with DK Metcalf there, getting getting close to market value, Tyler Lockett is number two. And yeah. uh, he, he – you know, he's not a big guy, but he makes the, the the catches when they need to be made. He's the great compliment to DK Metcalf. And now with Jackson Smith and Jigba there getting a lot of attention because he's the rookie and he was the first round pick. You know, it, it's going to be maybe easier for Tyler Lockett to kind of slip through the cracks and 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 get things done because maybe he gets even a little less attention as they try to figure out what the rookie's going to be able to do. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it's four straight seasons of a thousand yards for Tyler Lockett. And yeah, DK Metcalf is the number one there, but Lockett has been so consistent over the last few years. I mean, I, I think about my time covering in the NFC West, and this guy's always making plays week after week after week. So, I mean, if you are that consistent, then yeah, you might have should have been a little bit higher on our list. But it's not like, you know, we're talking about bad players and we've got all the rest of these guys. Um, let me go my uh, fourth pick here, Mike Williams of the Los Angeles Chargers. And it's another one where you're like, well, is he number two or is Keenan Allen number two? I, I don't know. I mean, I I would say just because Keenan Allen has more years of experience in the league, that puts him at number one. And so to me, Mike Williams is the number two, and he's one of the better number twos in the league. The only problem is just staying healthy, right? And so my interest in the Chargers right now, especially with Kellen Moore as their offensive coordinator, how is this three receiver, really good receiver system with Allen, with Williams, with the rookie Quentin Johnston? How is that going to come to fruition? Because I mean, over the last few years, we've seen Keenan Allen miss time. We've seen Mike Williams miss time. I mean, they barely played at the same time last year at all. So you add a third guy into that mix, and it should, and especially with the arm talent like Justin Herbert, it should only take that offense to new heights. But I think, like I said, Mike Williams still one of the really, really good number two guys in the league. It's just got to stay healthy. I will uh, now pivot to the New York Jets, where another new receiver who has yet to play for the team, who signed a four-year, $44 million contract, but he's clearly not going to be number one. Garrett Wilson, the offensive rookie of the year in 2022, is the number one guy with the Jets, Alan Lazard. And, and I don't know who knows how the numbers are going to shake out there because Lazard's got the familiarity with Aaron Rodgers. It's going to be interesting. Yeah. But even though even though Wilson's still working on rookie contract, he's got the hardware that makes him the guy. Lazard is the number two. 
and Lazard is getting big money, and Lazard is going to have a big impact this year in Aaron Rodgers' first season with the Jets and Lazard's first season in New York. Yeah, and it should be a big impact, especially because you have the familiarity with Nathaniel Hackett, right? So it's not like that guy is unaware of what Alan Lazard can do. And the quarterback, of course, with Aaron Rodgers, very aware of what Alan Lazard can do. You also add Randall Cobb into that mix. I mean, there, there's a good group of receivers there with the Jets that should have Aaron Rodgers in a position to excel. Uh, let's go with Chris Godwin for my next pick. Just another guy that seems like he should be higher on the list. Maybe he had over a thousand yards last year coming off the serious knee injury. And he's just now saying that he's feeling like himself again, which is something that we hear a lot of guys talk about when they're coming off a major injury like that ACL Achilles, what have you. It takes more than a year to really start feeling like yourself, to start feeling like you have that kind of explosiveness once again. And I, I mean, we said earlier in the show, I'm not really excited by a quarterback competition between Baker Mayfield and Kyle Trask. But if you have receivers around you, like Mike Evans as your number one and Chris Godwin as your number two, I mean, there are certainly worse guys you could be throwing to. So at least there is that. You have decent weapons there for your Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the reason I didn't pick Godwin earlier is what you just said. I don't know who the quarterback's going to be. I don't know if they're going to have somebody who's going to make full use of Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, but based on contract, based on production, based on past performance, Godwin, a guy who needed to be on the list, and I'm glad you you picked him. All right, now, now, this is where there's there's a bunch of different ways I can go. And in mm-hmm. Pittsburgh, is I assume Deontay Johnson's the number one because he's got the contract. George yeah. Pickens is the guy who's got the arrow pointing up. I don't know that he's number one yet. I'll go George Pickens, even though he thought he was snubbed by not being a pro bowler, he would probably view it as a snub to be regarded as not the number one receiver in Pittsburgh. He's got the talent to be, and he may become it this year, but they paid Deontay Johnson like 18, 19 million a year. So he's the guy and Pickens is the number two and they could do a lot worse than George Pickens is number two. They certainly could. Look, I, you know, Mike, I don't think that we talk enough about how good those Pittsburgh skill position players are slash can be this year with Kenny Pickett going into his second year. I mean, it, like, I think the last show I did, we were talking about the Falcons and, you know, oh man, the Falcons have this guy, they have this guy, they have that guy, that guy. Like the, the Steelers have Deontay Johnson, they have George Pickens, they have Najee Harris, they got Pat Fryer. That's a really good quad of skill position players for Kenny Pickett, who is an ascending player going into his second year in that same scheme in the offense. And I know that there are a lot of people, especially in Pittsburgh, those Yenzers don't necessarily like the scheme that they've got in their, their offensive coordinator. But I think having that continuity and all of those really talented guys is something that's really good for Kenny Pickett. And so Deontay Johnson can be number one. George Pickens can be number two, what have you. But they've got a lot of guys, I think, that can make that thing successful. And they've added two new starting offensive linemen. I saw over the weekend Mm -hmm. they have 18 of 22 starters back from last year, but a couple of the starters are going to lose their jobs, left tackle and left guard, because Isaac Simualu is there from Philadelphia to play guard, and Broderick Jones, the first-round pick from Georgia, at tackle. So that offense may be even better, should be even better this year as Pickett goes into year two. I had a couple others that didn't make the list. I mean, Zay Flowers in Baltimore, first-round pick. We don't know what he's going to be, but he steps right in as the guy across from OBJ. I mean, maybe yeah. Rashad Bateman, but I th- you, you make that investment in Zay Flowers, he's your number two guy. And also, Calvin Ridley with Christian Kirk in Jacksonville. Nice. He hasn't played, yeah. but there's just kind of this quiet, you know, we know what he did when he played in Atlanta. He's had the gambling suspension. That could be a huge difference maker for the Jaguars who finish strong and should be in the conversation for real contenders in the AFC. You know, it's funny. I don't know that it's all that quiet. They, they, the reporters out of Jacksonville have been really saying how good Calvin Ridley's looked in these first few OTAs that have been open uh, to the media. So that's not necessarily something that's not off my radar, you know, but I, I actually would take two other guys um, that one of them who is also in Jacksonville, Zay Jones did a really nice job as the number two option 
um, last year for Trevor Lawrence. So he's somebody that it's like, man, you don't necessarily think of him that way. And obviously they do have Calvin Ridley now to kind of be their number two, but he's on my radar and Tyler Boyd, even though he's kind of like the number three in Cincinnati, that receiving core is so good that Tyler Boyd is not necessarily somebody that couldn't be a number one for somebody else, right? He's been there the longest of that trio uh, between Boyd and T Higgins and Jamar chase, but he's arguably at least a number two for somebody else because he's pushed down by Jamar chase being the number one guy. And then T Higgins being the number two guy, but Tyler Boyd is as good as any number two. I think we've mentioned. Yeah, between Higgins and Boyd, one of them will not be there next year. Boyd's yeah. in the last year of a contract that pays between 8 and $9 million. He likely is the one to leave unless they can't work out a deal with Higgins. Then you just re-sign Boyd and you keep him around as the number two to Jamar Chase. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.